What do you do when you're sitting across from the doctor and the report isn't good? What do you do when you look at your bank statement, you look at your bills, and the numbers just don't add up? What do you do when life hits you with the unexpected? When life hits you hard and catches you on your blind side? If there is one thing that you should know and expect, It's that the reality of life can sometimes be earth-shattering and harsh. And perhaps you may not be able to turn your situation around immediately. But I pray that my words today will plant seeds of faith in your spirit. Don't be discouraged by what you see. Don't be discouraged by what you hear. Your life is in God's hands. And that's something you should actually tell yourself every once in a while. My life is in God's hands. Your health may not be where you want it to be, but I encourage you to do all that you can and then ask God to meet you halfway. Your dream may seem like it's no longer possible, But I encourage you to continue pursuing God. Whether or not you become a doctor, whether or not you become an attorney or a pilot, don't remove God from his throne in your life all because you're disappointed. God is bigger than that which comes against you. And if the fight intensifies and your own thoughts become negative and they start telling you, that this situation is permanent, that this result is permanent. Don't be discouraged. Even though it looks hopeless, the word of God says, joy comes in the morning. It says to everything, there is a season. So this too shall pass. Don't be moved by what you see with your natural eye, but rely on the word of God that you know. The word says that God is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Focus on that instead of what's disappointing you. The word says you are my hiding place and my shield. It says I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation and my God will hear me. Your life is in God's hand. Your future is in God's hands. If life hits you hard and you fall, wouldn't it be better to fall into the loving arms of Jesus Christ than anywhere else? So don't be defined by a diagnosis. Don't be defined by the numbers in your bank account. I've had to talk to myself and remind myself that I have a creator who has a plan and God's plan will still prevail. God's will will still be done. He has ordered my steps and so I am not alone. My beginning and my end is known by him. My highs and my lows are known by him. And I walk by faith and not by sight. Believing that the Lord has numbered my good days to exceed my bad days. So get to the point where you are content and at peace to say, Lord, my life is in your hands. You have said be anxious for nothing. You've said that you know the number of hairs on my head. And so I surrender and yield to your will. I would like to encourage you to praise God in advance. Whatever it is that you're praying for, thank the Lord for the miracle in advance. Praise the Lord for the breakthrough in advance. Give Him glory and honor for making a way even though what's right in front of you says otherwise. And here's the thing. When you praise the Lord in advance, you are taking the focus away from the problem, away from the pain, 
away from the heartache, and you're placing that focus on Jesus Christ. That's the power of praising Him in advance. You're saying to that problem, you're not big enough to make me stop praising the Lord. Sure, you're causing me some discomfort. Yes, I don't like this situation I'm in. And yes, this pain might be great, but Jesus Christ is still bigger than all of that. When you praise God in advance, you're acknowledging him to be bigger than the problems the supervisor at work is giving you. When you praise God in advance, you're saying, Lord, my car might be giving me trouble. My best friend might have betrayed me. And on top of all of that, I have some bills which I don't know how I'm going to pay. But you are still bigger than all of that. There is power in praising God in advance. God's word will never falter or fail, and it withstands the test of times. I can only tell you how the promises in the book of Psalms has blessed my life. Whenever I have felt discouraged and tired of waiting on a promise, I know that I can go to the book of Psalms and find a word to speak over my life and change my disposition. One of my favorites is Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The promises of God are vast and placed throughout the Bible. For instance, if you want wisdom, take a walk through the book of Proverbs. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. This is not just an encouraging word, but it's yet another promise. This wonderful book lends us insight on how we should conduct ourselves in every circumstance and how we should receive instruction. We should always be giving the Lord thanks and praise for His wonderful works and for fulfilling His promises even if they haven't come to pass yet. Even though we may not see what God is up to and it takes a while for it to come, rest assured if he promised it to you, it will come to pass. We should never worry or fear that God will lead us astray and not give us the victory. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Saints of the Most High God, if we can only believe the word and trust the Lord to do just what he said he will do, we will always come out on top. Our victory is assured and so is his promises. A gospel singer by the name of Jacqueline Carr has a song called, You're Bigger. And in the song she says, you're bigger than any marital problem. You're bigger than any broken home. You're bigger than our mistakes. The stripes on your back makes you bigger. Your blood makes you bigger. Your love makes you bigger. You overcame death, and that makes you bigger. Saints of God, we need to praise God whether or not we have what we want. We need to praise Him for His wonderful sacrifice. He so loved each and every one of us that he gave his begotten son so that whoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. So I encourage you to take a stand today. Whatever you're facing is not bigger than Jesus Christ. Whatever you're going through can't be bigger than the Lord because he is almighty, the all-powerful one. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas didn't see the prison they were in. They didn't focus on the guards, the chains, or the fact that they were uncomfortable. They focused on God. Acts 16 verse 25 and 26 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. As we praise 
and thank God in advance. Each of us will also experience a suddenly movement in our situation when things will turn around. We must recognize that Christ has already won. We must realize that His resurrection power is available to us as His children. We must release our lives to the leadership, to the counsel of the Holy Spirit. We must hold on to God's promises which tell us that in all things and through all things, He will be with us. And finally, we need to continue to stand firm in the Word of God. Let's be rooted and anchored in His unchanging Word. The life of a Christian isn't easy. Jesus Himself said that in this life we will have trouble. But He commands us to take heart, for He has overcome the world. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 14 verse 1. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, then you have every reason not to be troubled. You have every reason not to be anxious or worried within your heart. What I do know is at one point or another, Life will place you in a position where you need help. You might need help with a child. You might need help casting out a demon. You might need help overcoming a challenge. I know that one way or another, you will need help. But here's the thing. Getting help from people, it often comes with strings attached. When someone helps you out, it's not always for free. It comes with the expectation of either, you remember what I did for you, or one day I might need your help, so just remember this favor. However, I have good news. There is a God who offers you help with no strings attached. There is a God in heaven who will offer you aid. He will give you support without any pressure or any expectation that you could ever pay him back. In fact, David spoke about the help offered by God by saying in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I believe that the reason we should not let our hearts be troubled can be found in John chapter 14 verse 6 which reads Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me and if you move on further to read John chapter 14 verse 16 the Bible says and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. And so from these two verses, we know that if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, then you have accepted the one who is the way, the truth and the life. There is nothing that he does not regulate there is nothing that he is unaware of. He is the answer. He is the solution for all things. And the fact that he has given us a helper, the wonderful Holy Spirit, this means that we have help in times of trouble. We have strength in times of weakness. And we have guidance in times of uncertainty. So do not let your heart be troubled. Because if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, and if we submit to his ruling authority in our hearts, then you and I become like sheep to the Good Shepherd. If you know what's coming, you can prepare. That's why the Bible says, take up the whole armour of God. 
That way, you'll be able to withstand in the evil day. We have to be ready. We have to know what's coming. We need a strategy in place. And above all, we have to trust in the Lord. David said that some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but that's not where we as children of God place our trust. We trust in Jesus. Some will run to underground bunkers, some will trust in science, and some trust in doctors. But when you find yourself in a place where your well-being is attacked, your health is being attacked, and the doctors can't do anything for you, your future is being attacked, your stability is under attack, and your resources are being attacked, you will quickly realize that you need to be able to call on a higher power, and all of a sudden, the Bible matters because you have to now find what the full armor mentioned in Ephesians 6 is. You've got to know God's word so that you can stand in faith and declare his promises. You've got to know how to pray. You've got to have some substance about you, some conviction behind your faith. So what does the evil day look like for you? Maybe it's a day when you are tempted to fall back into addiction. Maybe it's a day when the devil preys on your biggest insecurities and makes you feel worthless. Maybe it's a day when someone close to you, someone you trust, does you wrong, and you have the urge to revenge. These are the days when our faith is put to the test. And we have to make a conscious decision to keep following Jesus no matter the cost. You are not without help. God is on your side. He is actually rooting for you and giving you the ability to overcome. He has filled you with His Holy Spirit, which is able to conquer every force of darkness. In Proverbs 16, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. There is no way that you can head into the unknown without Jesus. There's just no way. There's no way you can be at peace with an unknown future where anything can happen without Jesus. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what the year holds. You just don't know who or what's going to knock at your door. Some people had plans and unemployment knocked on their door. Some people were working hard to achieve certain things when sickness knocked on the door. Others were good, enjoying life, until uncertainty and anxiety all knocked on the door of their lives. So what do you do? What will you do? Do you have an issue with anger? Look at your heart. Do you have an issue with self-control? An issue with gambling? Do you keep cycling in and out of the same sin? Well, it's a hard issue. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life, the Bible says. The issues of life are heart issues. Don't be intimidated by the magnitude of the temptation around you. Don't be frightened by the size of the enemy. Instead, take up your weapons. Take up prayer. Take up the Word of God. Take up joy and peace in the midst of of adversity. These are the things that the devil can't stand. Matthew 15 verse 8 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So you can say the right things. You can speak in the right kind of manner all you want, but it's not prayer until you give God all of your heart, soul, and mind. It's not worship until you worship Him with every fiber of being inside you. It's not sincere if it doesn't involve your heart. Guard your heart, saints. It's crucial. 
All too often, we're concerned about things that don't benefit our heart, our soul, when instead we should be committed to say, Jesus, you can have my heart.